spindle ohms. On the last video, we talked about how to put a stepper motor onto the spindle of the lathe. In this video, we're going to talk about using the software that drives the, the motor and lets you control the position. When you first open the indexer software, you see a blank screen, and it gives you the choice of either uh, opening an existing file, which you won't have the first time you run the program, of course, or create a new file. So let's go on File, New File, and it um, asks me uh, where I want to put it. I'm just going to put it on the desktop. I can type in the name here, New File, and it creates a new file for me with a number of index wheels. Now, in the software, you can have multiple index wheels. Uh, the default is a 14 hole, 20, 24, and so forth. As you can see, a number of different index wheels. You can uh, work with just one or more than one. If you want more or less, you can just uh, click on this little uh, box right here. Now I'm down to three, or you can increase the number that you want. Uh, if you want to delete a particular one, just select it, click on it, and right click delete to get rid of any particular index wheel that you don't need anymore. Now the first thing you want to do is edit these wheels. A couple of ways of doing that. One way is to right click properties and you'll see some information that can be edited like the number of holes. You can change that or the name. Sometimes it's more convenient to have that all the time. So go up onto your menu, choose window, uh, properties. And now over on the right hand, you'll permanently have that same window uh, up all the time. Most of the time, however, you'll probably find it most convenient just to use this uh, index wheel editor window. Um, you can select the wheel and uh, change the number of holes. Just highlight it, uh, type in a new number, or you can put the cursor in there and use your scroll wheel. Uh, if you have a mouse with the scroll wheel in the middle, you can use that. Likewise, you can change your name, uh, the name of the wheel here. Let's just call this layer one and change the name on the other one to layer two, for example. Uh, and it's convenient to give them meaningful names. Uh, for example, if you're doing open segmented work, you might have several layers. Uh, so let's go back and uh, take the example of open segmented. Let's say we want 40 holes on layer one and 40 on layer two. Um, the next thing to know is that um, right now these holes can be either filled or unfilled. Uh, when they're unfilled, uh, as it's rotating, the wheel is not going to stop there. If you click on any of these holes, uh, clicking on them changes them from unfilled to filled. And as it rotates, the wheel will stop at any of these filled holes. So you can just go around and edit these. Um, sometimes, though, you want to just fill all of them. That's probably the more typical case. So you go down here and choose Fill All, or you can go back and Clear All. Sometimes you want to fill every other one. So here we'll start with hole zero and fill every two holes and hit the Fill button. And now you can see every other hole is filled. So that's a convenient way to get uh, some holes filled, some not. And you can still go in and edit them by hand afterwards. Now, phase. Talk about phase. This little blue arrow here is where the wheel will stop. We'll see that a little later when it's in motion. Um, that's sort of like your peg that fits in the holes, or that, that's, that's where the hole's going to uh, stop as it's rotating around. You can change the phase, and watch what happens as I move this phase slider, that blue arrow moves somewhere else. And the scale of 0 to 1 means 0 to 1 of the uh, spacing between holes. So if I had a 10 uh, hole wheel going phase 0 to 1 would still represent going uh, one full interval between the holes. But with 10 holes, clearly it's uh, different than if you got 40 holes, uh, then that actual rotational distance is different. But that's what phase means. So if I put it halfway here, for example, that means that it's going to uh, be phase shifted. One wheel is going to be phase shifted from the other. So if I have layer one and fill every other hole, and then layer two and fill every other hole, 
uh, if I'm doing open segmented work, for example, uh, these, uh, each layer will be shifted with respect to the prior one. And that's kind of an, uh, a nice thing to do. If you're doing ornamental work, doing a pattern, this will also do a phase shift of the, whatever pattern you're using in ornamental work. Uh, okay, now, once you've got your file um, or your uh, wheel set up the way you like, you can save it as uh, an XML file, um, something different. Um, I'll call this new file underscore one. Save that. Okay, now let's go to the shop and uh, see how this works in actual practice. Okay, so now we're in the shop. The first thing you need to do is tell the software uh, some information about your hardware. Uh, on a Mac, it's under Preferences. On uh, a PC, it will be under Tools, Options. We need to select the tab that says Hardware and set some information about your stepper motor. Most of your stepper motors are going to be 1.8 degree, 200 steps, although you might have one that's 0.9 degree, 400 steps. You need to set that. Uh, the micro stepping is fixed at a half because that's a function of the driver board. The number of gears, uh, teeth on your small gear, in my case it's 20. The number of teeth on your large gear, in my case it's 130. And most important, have to tell it which one of the four uh, positions on that fidgets board uh, you chose to wire your stepper motor to. I chose mine to be wired to the third position that uh, lets it know uh, where to find the stepper motor. Uh, there's also information in here about uh, changing uh, key assignments on all the commands, that kind of stuff. Uh, once you've saved this, it's set, set in your preference. You don't have to do it every time, just do it once. Now there is a nice way to monitor the status of your uh, board under window fidget 1062. You've got a window here that has information. It's read only just for diagnostics, gives information about your stepper motor, uh, the positions and all that kind of stuff. It's a nice uh, thing to use for diagnostics. Your controls are in the lower right hand corner of the screen. You choose the engage button that turns on the power to the stepper motor and you'll see a little uh, uh, pop-up thing that says, uh, are you sure you're at zero or don't forget to set zero. I often forget to set that. Uh, that's just a reminder to make sure the rotation on your spindle is exactly what you want to call zero. A nice way to uh, position that is manually using the clockwise, counterclockwise buttons will manually spin your stepper motor and you can adjust the speed from fast to slow. So you can turn it clockwise or counterclockwise. So here we're moving it clockwise, counterclockwise, I can move the slider to be faster, slower, uh, and that allows you to adjust it to the exact position you want to call zero. And then under control, set zero, that tells it now that is our zero reference for all further operations. Operations couldn't be any easier. Just click on the go to next button You'll see on the display, the image of your index wheel moves. Uh, it only stops on the filled holes and they stop right where that arrow is. Depending on our phase, we can move the position of the arrow. And go to zero button tells us go back to the zero reference. A couple of ways to do both of these controls, either with the big buttons or up on the menu on the top of the screen, or more importantly, using command N for next. On the keyboard, command Z for going to zero. So here I have the camera set on the uh, spindle. And each time you hit the go to next button, you can see it automatically rotates to the next index position for you. And going back to zero, back at the zero reference again. We've been on this layer two wheel. If we select layer one, Notice that uh, uh, it hasn't jumped to zero because it assumes all the index wheels are bolted to the same shaft. For more information on getting the software, take a look at my website and look for the indexer software. Uh, you'll see information on how to install it on a Mac, PC, or Linux computer and um, uh, other tips on how to use the software.